I am not a star. Despite what Star Wars propaganda tries to say, I am a rat. Or in Star Wars Battlefront 2, a rat playing as a human. Even the extremely useful abilities and powerful tools found in star cards are not stars. Star Wars' name is a lie. I will not continue with this charade, and in protest, I shall be all of 2017's Star Wars Battlefront 2 story without using any star cards. I also shall not be changing my gun from whatever is given to me by the game, nor will I use Dio's powerful electric shock ability. Honestly, I chose this challenge because I'm a fool who is illiterate and misread a YouTube comment and did the exact opposite of the requested challenge. My bad. Don't worry, mustache. I won't fail you. I'll get you that challenge. Just first, let's see how I did testing my shooting skills as a special forces unit in the middle of a war. Spoilers and shenanigans ahead. You know we can really use someone like you. Not this early in the game. Help me and I'll help you. It's Just that easy. wait a few levels, man, and I'll be on your side. Don't worry. My favorite part of escaping imprisonment by the Rebel Alliance is how easy it is. Inferno Squad's leader, Aiden Versio's entire plan, relied on them leaving her helmet in the room with her so she could activate Dio from afar, and for some strange reason, that's exactly what they did. How are the Rebels winning this war? Being that I'm almost shot down in the very first fight, I suppose I have my answer. Nonetheless, it's not much trouble to delete the intercepted message that would have alerted the Rebel fleet that the fight above Endor is a trap before hightailing it out of there. Completing the first level without any losses is a big win for me, and a sure sign that this really is the Empire's finest hour. Well, looks like things are going really well. As is plainly seen, just because my character is Special Forces doesn't mean I am. It only takes a few shots to put me down, but what makes it fun is that nearly every enemy dies to a single headshot. So if I make use of cover and keep from missing too much, I have a decent chance of survival. Admittedly, it is much easier to chase my ally stormtroopers around and hide behind trees, leaving all the work to my fellow soldiers. When I can't count on them to help, I also can't seem to count on my own shooting prowess, instead joining the Death Star in its end. Funny enough, when waves of rebels plus a captured ATST move against us, I have much better luck, as the walker never even once considers me a threat. I'm insulted, but also thankful for that. Even with superior firepower, the rebels can't win. Dude, they just blew up the Death Star. I don't think this is the time to be talking. Uh-oh. The final retreat off Endor gives me a little trouble as the lesson to always, always, always fight from cover is drilled into me, along with plenty of blaster bolts. A lesson that does me a little good flying away as there's not much to take cover behind in space, but I don't have much need for it anyway, easily blowing away the other ships. Turns out the lesson I do need up here is checking my blind spot. Uh-oh. Ah, the Corvus is safe. And very sturdy, it seems. In preparation for Operation Cinder, we've been ordered to the Fondor shipyards. Agent Hath I've always had a fondness for that location. What I really appreciate about space combat is how in Star Wars books like ABC Squadron, it's exceptionally difficult to kill other pilots. But here, it's not a problem. None of these ships seem to have even the smallest shred of survival instincts as they open fire upon them. As for my survival, all I have to do is pull a simple 180, and these highly trained veteran pilots have no clue how to finish me off. It's not the moving murderous rebels I have to look out for, but the stationary objects simply existing. Infiltrating the rebel ship starts off easy peasy, as the game has provided me with the strongest gun in the game. But the arrogance that comes with that is far deadlier to me. As I seek to destroy their cannons, waves of rebels swarm us, and my failure to protect my flank, plus my utter surprise at the rebels' uncanny ability to materialize out of thin air, means death for me. A gun that kills everyone in its landing vicinity is still no match for my refusal to show basic common sense. Crazy that the moment I make use of cover, I actually manage to pull through, 
despite a couple close calls, only for Aiden and Hask to nearly die when they blow the last cannon. You know, it's moments like these that make me wonder, why the heck do we keep taking our helmets off every two seconds? I know we're gorgeous people, but I feel like the best way to keep our beauty is with proper protective headgear. Ugh, this place is such a pill. Time for an intermission as Luke Skywalker strikes a pose so we all know how cool he is. Luke says he only kills when not given a choice otherwise, but I'm not sure the trooper I cut in half from behind would agree. Obviously being THE Luke Skywalker means I can cut through all resistance with little trouble. But that's only because I keep hiding from the onslaught of troopers. My lightsaber can only defend for so long, and without any force powers to back me up, my greatest advantage is the Imperials' lack of sense on when to stop shooting at the fella who can deflect all their shots back. Teaming up with Del, the Inferno squad member who is the last of the Imperials alive here, plus the only guy smart enough not to attack a frickin' Skywalker, we lay waste to waves of bugs while we explore the island. This is post-Emperor slash Darth Vader fight for Luke, so it'd be pretty embarrassing to lose to a bunch of bugs. Thankfully, the only worrisome things here are my awful puns. Man, I didn't mean to bug these guys. I've always been a little bit of a pest. Of course there's conflict in me. I'm not blind. I know what the Empire is capable of, but what else is there? A choice. The Rebellion? No. A choice to be better. Oh, he's just so good! Well, we've played four levels so far. One is the heroic Luke Skywalker, and one that lasted less than five minutes. So you know what that means. It's time to change sides and become rebels. To be fair, if Aiden and Dell had stayed pro-Imperial after witnessing Operation Cinder, the Emperor's post-death mandate, that is all about decimating every Imperial planet as we retreat from them, I don't think there'd be any believable redemption for these two. Just wish the campaign was longer and we had more time prior to this moment so it has more weight. But tis how it goes. Side note, if you're interested in a fantastic Star Wars story that this game heavily alludes to, I recommend the Aftermath Star Wars trilogy novels set during the one year between the Battle of Endor and the Battle of Jakku. Great series that more people should know about. Anyway, back to betraying the Empire. Look at it, it's beautiful. We keep our mask off because we're good. And Hask is but a faceless soldier. Okay, well that, that analogy doesn't work anymore. Commander Versio and Agent Miko have abandoned the mission they've committed treason. So you're saying they failed this city? Well, it was a short-lived rebellion, that's for sure. Things only grow worse from there as the galaxy itself unravels around me to ensure I can't win. Uh-oh. I don't think I'm gonna live. Oh, no, this is for the best. I might not be paralyzed when I come back. Passageway on the other side of the Nope. Bomba. Nope, this is this is way worse. You, Please, Dell, I think you need to put me out of my misery. I think I'm becoming more than human, Dell. I can't tell if I'm dying or turning into Superwoman. Maybe both. I'm unstoppable. Oh, I'm very stoppable. You know, it might be a good idea to restart the game. It's just a thought. I'm free. Dell, I'm free. I can move. I, I, I can move. Look at that. Everything's so beautiful. No, who cares about anybody's orders? I'm free to move as I please! Oh, that was still a bad idea no matter what, but, uh... I was free to do it! Free from that collapsing timeline, I either snuck or fought my way past the Imperial patrols. After serving with the Empire for so long, it proves surprisingly difficult to put down Aiden's old allies. Not emotionally or morally, but in actual practice, just because there's so many of them, and it only takes a few bolts to end me. Even my time in the at, -AT that we hijacked is a real blow for me, both literally and figuratively, since even a massive, nigh-invulnerable tank like this still doesn't stop me from getting blown up. To be fair, it seems like most Imperials die this way in invincible machines that always fail to live up to the invincible aspect. 
Um, I don't think I have a gun big enough for that, but I can try. Enemy with heavy weapons, oh, really, Dell? Thanks for that. What are you doing? Oh, good thing he's really, really bad at his job. Oh, and now he's dead, so he can go be bad at his job in hell. Having escaped the Empire's tightening grip, Aiden and Dell flee into the Rebels' waiting arms. Despite murdering Rebels by the dozens for years and years, simply saying sorry and offering valuable intel immediately makes the Rebels be like, yeah, no problem, bros. Come help us win the war. So that's what we do. Flying into a space battle around Naboo, I discover much to my horror of boredom that space battles? Like, really boring. I mean, my god. I thought I'd be in more danger. But once again, these enemy pilots have zero zest for life and make no effort at all to avoid getting shot to scrap. You'd think the massive Star Destroyer would be interested in helping them. But nah, it seems content to let its TIE Fighters come out and get destroyed for seven minutes of tedium. I like this game. I really do. I've spent over a thousand hours playing this game. Though, admittedly, mostly in multiplayer. But my god. This might be the most boring space combat I've ever had to chill through. I suppose a little boredom beats getting murdered, but I'm not sure by how much. It is much more fun when we land on the planet, and I get to play my favorite original trilogy character, Princess Leia. As we exchange blaster fire with stormtroopers, I get my first glimpse that everything is not quite right with this galaxy. Trying to stay alive, I ignore that oddity and find surviving to be a harrowing task, as the waves of Imperials never seem to end. If I didn't stay glued to cover, letting Dell and my fellow Rebels get blown away, plus have an incredibly powerful gun, Leia would be joining Alderaan. In the thick of it, I might have gotten a bit carried away. You're gonna die without anyone knowing your name, without anyone mourning you. How's this feel? I'm Princess Leia of Alderaan. My planet is dust and soon you will be too. For the ghost! Oh, sorry, old habits. My my fictional realities are mixing. We just for Yarikawa! Despite Leia being the one calling for the retreats, I still lack the sense to pull back and find myself being overrun over and over as we defend the city's palace. Once I finally heed her call, the greatest worry is the ever-growing presence of more and more floating corpses. Before I can investigate this disturbing phenomenon, an ion pulse fries all of the advancing Imperial's equipment, and we take victory. You've done a lot of damage to this alliance. We did. We're really good at our job. I mean, yes, we're very sorry. It's taken us too long to realize that we were fighting for the wrong. I know, like three whole levels. It was crazy. Taking a detour as Han Solo for the sole reason is that it's fun being Han Solo. I find while the combat can be punishing, even for this skilled smuggler if he doesn't use cover, the real trouble, once again, lies elsewhere. What is going on with everybody's bodies? Please, you're scaring me. This is like weird zombie gravity. Oh my god, stop it. Stop it. Stay dead. Uh, we're moving backwards. We're going over here. That's not getting down. This is getting down. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han Solo. I'm Han, Han freaking Solo. They write songs about me. The only song they're gonna write about you is a death hymn. Perhaps because it keeps going to my head, I'm surprised to find that my time as Han and Leia is so much harder than my time as Aiden. I think it's also because their hero powers are much more impactful. And being I can't use those powers, the increase in enemy numbers is simply too much. Even when I win, the fact that the corpses won't stop moving is leaving me terrified and weakened. Not a good state to be in when thrown into a dogfight. The space kind or the animal kind. I can promise you that from experience. The Millennium Falcon is iconic, but you know what else it is? A huge target. The Imperials don't even have to be decent shots to hit me, and I'm no ace pilot able to dodge their fire, making my time in the Falcon a quite bit more anxious ridden than exciting. It doesn't help that the fight becomes far more dragged out as my blasts do minimum damage, with the game expecting me to use rockets to speed things along. Something I obviously can't do with them locked behind star cards. But patience, rebel backup, 
and Solo's signature luck win out in the end, and I'm free to continue with the war. Onwards to Bespin, in order to track down Hask, the only member of our team that stayed loyal to the Empire, and bring him to justice. Or, at the very least, aggravate Imperial forces. Cover is absolutely everything in this game. What is going on with the bodies? Let the bodies hit the floor, please. Rah! It's even part of the lore. I don't know what's happening. I think they're trying to become angels or something, but they're forgetting a key step. Well, at least this makes mass killing whimsical. It's sort of artistic in a way. I can't play any game anymore without breaking it, can I? Think about all the good we've done since Bardo Stell. We've made the galaxy safer, giving people hope. It's fantastic how Ivan managed to remove 30 years of conditioning in about five minutes. I'm really proud of her. Good on her. Uh, all right, sure, I'll, I'll try. Come back here, you. I think we're weakening him. Just do this for about 10 trillion more years and he'll go down. Uh-oh. All right, that's an interesting tactic. I think it's working. Oh. At least the bodies aren't freaking out for once. Oh, why did I say anything? Why would I say anything? Stealing a cloud car, Dell and I bring the fight to three refueling Star Destroyers. A normal Star Destroyer has about 45,000, 46,000 people aboard. But let's say these three, this late in the war, are only at half capacity. That's still nearly 68,000 people that we blow into the abyss without batting an eye. But we're the good guys, so no losing sleep over that. Instead, let's go be Lando, sabotaging an Imperial factory. Trying to sabotage it anyway, as it turns out the forces here are much more than ready for me. Once again, the hero character gives me the most trouble, as Lando has incredible crowd control abilities. Not being able to use them means I get overrun repeatedly by the factory guard. Rolling the dice and charging face first in combat is a good reminder that I'm a terrible gambler and a terrible shot. Only with a thin sheet of metal protecting me and making sure every bolt meets a bucket head can I pull through the skirmish and bring the factory down around me. This door's not gonna open, right? Oh, yes it is. Every time I ask a question, I'm always answered with the wrong answer. I gotta stop asking. Escaping by stolen ATST, I loiter in the lava to see if it damages me. Note to self, experimenting with lava either ends with Oh, cool. Or much more likely, ah! If I don't do that, though, and keep the distance from the turbo lasers dotting the landscape, it's no trouble to reach the extraction point and head into the final battle of the war. Can you please stop shooting me? Oh, okay. <laughs> Why didn't I ask sooner? That was wonderful. Our first mission here is to reinforce a weakening defense point. But oddly enough, we don't do it from the sky, despite being air support. Landing, the game forces me into using binoculars to call in orbital strikes on these AT-ATs. I tried to do it myself, but I can't even make a dent. It takes a lot longer to take down the tanks, because I'm a terrible aim with the orbital strike, but at least this turret makes short work of the advancing Imperial forces. The other objective is to blow up a downed destroyer from within but the guards here prove a little harder to take down as there's a distinct lack of cover. Only by going out of my way to take cover do I manage to lure troopers close and take them down. Oh, he's doing the splits. Oh, he got self-conscious about doing the splits. No, no, he's, he's doing a kickflip, I think. This is one impressive dead guy. Next, we work to escort our ships in the air before being ambushed by my old frenemy, Hask. Hello, oh no. Oh, well hello. It may not be the best start to the fight, but the second attempt goes smoother, being I'm able to get an actual shot off this time. Even as a boss fight, space combat is far too easy to worry about, as all I have to do is stay behind my target and blast away until Hask spins out of the battle 
hopefully never to be seen again. Close one. I agree. Could you imagine what it'd be like if you fell? Let's see what it's like. Yeah, that's about what I expected. I, I'm just, I've just accepted that this is how dead bodies work in the Star Wars galaxy at this point. Throw her off the side. Is you could just shoot me, man. That's, that's a. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have told him he could just shoot me. You can't kill me. I am all the rebels. Oh my God, he must have been all the stormtroopers. No, nope, don't start, pal. Don't start. Stay down. I feel like he's mocking me. He's like hitting a pose in death. Oh wait, I forgot I was still in a battle. It's extremely satisfying to peek out and headshot all approaching adversaries, clearing the path to Admiral Versio, Aiden's less than stellar father. Despite how much I nearly died in order to rescue him from this ship's destruction, he is the kind who goes down with their ship instead of, you know, going home to be tried for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Honestly, probably a smart move for him. It's over. <laughs> and then suddenly, a third Death Star covers the sun. This looks like the perfect setting for a movie in 30 years that's not going to do very well. While an incredibly short campaign, that probably would have been the smart place to leave this story, but no. Let's follow along as the game jumps 30 years and we find ourselves as Kylo Ren torturing Del for information. Unfortunately for Kylo, Del's mental defenses are more than a match for me as I lack Kylo's tremendous force powers. Oh no, I'm gonna die. You guys can't kill me, this is a memory. You know, isn't this supposed to be a power fantasy? Is it my fantasy to be really bad at everything? That seems to be reality. This challenge reduces even force users to cowering behind cover and only doing hit and runs. But that tactic is enough to weaken Dell's mind and get the information Kylo needs for his movie run. They spend the entire game making us like these characters. He took it. And then they make us torture them and watch them die? How is that a good idea? Even worse is Hask popping back up to see if we missed him. And this time it's his turn to tell us how we failed this city. And then he missed. That's why he fires four times. All four shots missed. Dell's fine. He went into hiding. Hask is just so embarrassed. He never told anybody. Then it's time to join Shriv. Aiden and her daughter Zay as we investigate Dell's disappearance and this militia working for the First Order by kidnapping kids. Unfortunately, tis another slow space mission that's extra slow as the game very much expects me to use explosives. The only bright side of not being able to speed this along is that as usual, no one seems in a rush to kill me, leaving my poor flying once again to do the job for them. Then we're off to the planet Vardos, the same planet Aiden and Dell turned traitor on 30 years ago. It's not doing so good, and neither are we when we're captured by Hask. Things get even worse when Hask makes us watch as the first actually effective Star Destroyer shows up and blows Aiden's daughter right out of the sky. She's in the ship. She's not the ship, just so we're clear. Thankfully, we're saved by a different group of people. That militia group we had just fought up in space who want to kill both us in the First Order. I'm more than happy to pay them back for the rescue by a blast of the cerebellum. With the two groups distracted battling each other, plus these walkers scattered around the city for me to take advantage of, plus the fact that these enemy walkers refuse to fire on me for absolutely no reason, it makes searching for Zay's escape pod quite easy. It's not a problem to sneak aboard Hask's ship, and at first the stormtroopers are no match for a fast blaster, but that doesn't stay that way for long. Okay, I'll just go this way. You know what? I don't think I want to go this way. Cover plus narrow hallways makes the large force of stormtroopers we face doable, but that's all ruined when we need to detonate the hyperdrive generator. My job is to protect my daughter while she places the charges, but that's easier said than done, which is saying something in itself since I often stumble over my words. Waves upon waves of Imperial. Oh wait, sorry. My bad. 
First Order forces pile on top of us, and I struggle to keep them off Zay. The endless soldiers have great angles on me, while often firing from cover themselves. Plus, if I die, I have to restart the entire fight all over. This is undoubtedly the most difficult battle of the game, which works since it's the final fight of the game. But I'm certainly not sticking the landing here. It's only when I realize that Zay is a freaking immortal and no weapon, be it flame or blaster bolt, can do more than distract her. This allows me to do hit and runs, fleeing back into cover every time I take damage in order to heal and return to strike again. It may take a while and not always work, but sooner or later, we do get there. This gets the charges set, only for us to have to do another wave fight two seconds later in way smaller confines. At least this time, I have plenty of cover, even though I really do like to cut it close. I'm so scared right now. I'm starting to not feel like special forces. I am genuinely surprised to survive this fight without going down, but finally, we're clear when we reroute the troopers to a distraction. Unfortunately for us, main villain energy can't be tricked, and Hask pops up to grab Zay. Thankfully, she's quite a fighter, but not without things getting a little sticky. Sorry, Shepard. Well, we won't see that guy again. Hopefully. We'll see. In 30 years, they'll be somehow... Back. Oh, I forgot to say the line! I forgot to say the line! You failed this city! Oh my god, it's too late. He's dead. He can't hear me. With Hask vaporized and the hyperdrive blown apart, Aiden decides to take a little nap from her wounds. Wow. She just got introduced to this game, and yet somehow the sequels managed to kill off yet another original trilogy character. If I wasn't so heartbroken... I'd be impressed at the audacity. I wish you could see what I have seen. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The First Order is still coming. But we have hope. And I'll light the spark that will burn the, the flame that will start. To win. A forest fire that Smokey the Bear will come stop to destroy the resistance that will destroy the First Order. Something like that. I think that's the line. Huzzah! After six hours, one minute, and 71 deaths, I've beaten all of 2017's Star Wars Battlefront 2 without using star cards or changing weapons. It's not my longest or my hardest challenge, but a fun one nonetheless. So who cares? It certainly got me killed plenty regardless. Now I'm off to stare longingly at my old main General Grievous and wonder when next I'll crawl rush into certain doom. Who knows, maybe I'll crawl rush into you someday, and we'll have a laugh about it over your broken legs. Should be fun. Have a great day, friends.